Yerba Mate is a traditional South American drink that's getting a lot of popularity and for years we've all heard about the wonderful health benefits of green tea. But could Yerba Mate be even healthier and could it boost weight results even more? In this video, I wanted to go over the research we have surrounding mate, the safety behind it, and some important tips when it comes to taking it that I feel haven't been spoken about enough so definitely stay with me till the end. Also, real quick before we get started, it would mean the world to me if you hit the like button down below for the YouTube algorithm, subscribe if you like this type of content, and let's get started. Yerba mate is a species of the holly family Aquifoliacea. Its tea is brewed from the dry leaves of Yerba mate, which is the evergreen shrub or tree. And you have approximately 95% obtained from the dry leaves and 5% from the stems. And there are about four different compounds in it that stand out and make it a plant that researchers love to examine. It's rich in xanthines, saponins, polyphenols, which is said to be higher than green and black tea, and caffeol derivatives. It also contains caffeine and tannins, just like black tea, but is less astringent. But in terms of how it supports weight loss, I found it really interesting because the study back in 2014, which looked at how yerba mate ingestion augments fat oxidation and energy expenditure during exercise, they took 14 participants, male and female, took capillary blood samples, collected and analyzed for blood lactic concentration at rest, and at each sub-maximal and maximum power output, and found that yerba mate ingestion to increase the exercise effectiveness for weight loss and sports performance. So in other words, the weight loss you would already achieve from exercise is now achieved more efficiently with yerba mate. And the most popular research paper on this came from the randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial looking at its anti-obesity effects over 12 weeks with 30 participants. It found yerba mate supplementation decreases body fat mass Bo percent body fat and waist hip ratio exhibited potent anti obesity abilities that did not produce significant adverse effects. So, the real question is what type of yerba mate to go with and how do you use it? Ideally, with this one, organic mate would be best just so that you know that it's free of smoke byproducts and herbicidal residues. It's also important to avoid roasted and heavily smoked types since it contains higher levels of a compound called polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons or PAHs that can be potentially carcinogenic. Some people actually smoke this herb, which I would avoid completely. Do not try to smoke this. The tricky part is because we don't have enough data to be certain on how much of the PAHs can cause cancer, but we do know from the study on PAHs and the potential source of carcinogenicity of mate that unfortunately safe levels of exposure to benzo alpha pyrene, which is a type of PAH, and other potentially carcinogenic PAHs in drinks have not been determined using epidemiological data in humans. Based on rat studies though, that an exposure of five nanograms per kilogram body weight daily, so 350 nanograms a day for a 70 kilogram person is virtually safe in humans so it's not something to fret about entirely and as a comparison smoking a cigarette introduces about 10 nanograms into the body and if you're a smoker then it may be best to avoid it because your levels may elevate but again this is going to largely depend on the extraction process of the plant also the carcinogenic pahs are often hydrophobic it may not readily transfer into infusions, which is why knowing where the mate comes from is huge here. Does it come from a sustainable farm? It's ironic actually, because at the same time, the mate is of high, if the mate is of high quality, it should also provide anti-cancer activities, mainly through, through proteasome and topo isomerase inhibition. It also can reduce DNA damage from oxidative stress, but of course, the jury is out on using it for this reason. And it's way too early for any substantial claims to be made for using it for cancer. So if I were to drink it, the safest bet is to not drink it at very hot temperatures. Or if you're really concerned, stick with cold yerba mate beverages. The most popular one here in the States is the USDA Organic Fair Trade one by Guayaki, which I'm sure you've guys seen on the shelves in your grocery store. It's probably how you've even heard about, about it in the first place. If you are a cancer survivor, have a family history of cancer, or just generally don't feel comfortable drinking yerba mate tea, then it's okay. By all means, don't add it into your diet. This is another one of those cases where you, you have to be the judge and weigh the pros and cons against your own 
goals, health history, and personal food philosophy. And always talk to your doctor before trying out new supplements to even see if you're the right candidate for them because it really isn't for everyone. For example, it may agitate some people with hypersensitivity to caffeine and it's also not suitable in pregnancy, breastfeeding, or in children. This was just one of the many conditions in which yerba mate was researched in. I can do another video discussing more if you'd like. Just let me know in the comments below. But I'm more curious to hear from you guys though. Let me know in the comments below. Also hit the subscribe button too if you found any value in this. And I'll see you on the next one.